Well, hi-ho, folks, and welcome back to part two of the interview with Luca and Kat. And so we, well, hi, first and foremost, hi, Terwinkle. Salutation. Are you all ready to continue this fun interview? Sure. All right, great. And so we're back here in Westfall, and again, we are going to talk to Kat and Luca. And as you recall last time in the first part, is we covered everything up to the proposal. And so when we get back here, we are going to start talking about the actual wedding. And so we're going to find out all about that and more when we come back. So we'll be right back with that. Alrighty, folks, and we are back. Now, if you haven't seen part one, go take a look at that first. But if you just can't force yourself to go look at part one, let us introduce who we have here. So first of all, foremost we have Catherine Cantor's Crow, Arrow of Spring, Gunslinger Engineer, nicknamed Cat, Revered of the Orsworn. She's Ambassador Catherine, is a level 100 Gilnan hunter, and currently looking tired yet seems to be in a good mood. Hello Cat. Hi. And next to Cat is Luca Cantor's Crow, Skinner, leather worker, militia woman, revered of the Orsworn, is Luca the Hordebreaker, level 100 human, one quarter dwarf. Hunter, currently metal leg broken. Uh oh, but she looks happy. What, what, what happened, uh, Luca? Cat happened. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. All righty. We'll get more into that in a minute. But that is the two young ladies that we're talking about, and we're talking about their in-game relationship. And again, catch part one, folks. Then come back. Now, Cat, between last episode and this one, you've changed your hair color. You've gone blonde. Why, ma'am? Uh, because an old friend of mine decided to visit yesterday and guilted me into taking some potion that turned my hair blonde. Oh, uh, Luca, what, what do you have to say about that? It was me. <laughs> do, do you prefer the blonde? It was actually Kat's ex, another one of my characters, and she loves blondes. And as a birthday present to herself, she decided to dye Kat's hair blonde. She tried to force it onto Cat first off, and then eventually guilted her into it. Is that how the leg was, was broken? No, that was at the end of the storyline that we recently finished up for the guild. Ah, so what happened there, ma'am? Cat has these nice, fancy electrical powers now because of... I, I think we talked in the, in the Oathsworn episode about how she was kidnapped and, and she was being experimented on. So she, she got some nice little electricity powers and she had this other personality and control of her body. And she actually electroc electrocuted Luca and uh, Luca died for a short time there. But since her leg was all kinds of metal thingamajigs, it kind of exploded. Oh my gosh. Alrighty, folks. So when we come back, we're going to talk all about their in-game wedding and how that went. So we'll be right back with that. Alrighty, folks, and we are back. And so, Luca, you propose. She says yes. How long was it from the time that you proposed to the wedding? I believe it was a few months, actually. Okay, and... Now, Kat, why did you guys wait so long? We were kind of in the middle of another guild storyline, so we were waiting for that moment of peace to come by to kind of get the chance to get everyone together and have a nice wedding between us and the guild. Oh, okay. And so a couple months go by. Now, are you doing any planning in character for the wedding during that time? I don't think they really planned it out that well. Everything was just kind of last minute. Um, we need someone to marry us quickly and... I think the only thing they really thought about was location. Okay. <laughs> so did you guys discuss it out of character, Luca, beforehand as far as day and time? We did discuss that, but other otherwise, in character, it was very canters. Okay. <laughs> and uh, is that chaotic? Yes. <laughs> All right. And so the day of the wedding comes, and so who is all there at the wedding? Luca's sister, Jekka, was there, along with her husband, Hildar. A couple of the protectors were there. Kat's childhood best friend was there. Uncle Nate was there. Oh, right, Uncle Nate. Yeah, no, we don't include him. <laughs> now, who performed the, uh, the ceremony? Uh, that was Bella Thane, I think one of the uh, priests in our guild. Okay, and where did you guys decide to have the wedding at? We had it at that nice big tree in Draenor with the water all around it and that little wooden bridge that leads up to there. 
in Shadow Moon Valley. Oh, okay. Awesome. And so, folks, when we come back, they're about ready to go on their honeymoon, but tragedy strikes. And we'll find out all about that when we come back. Alrighty, folks, and we are back. And so, Luca, wedding's done, getting ready for the great honeymoon, and tragedy strikes. What happens? Kat and Luca actually did. They packed up and went to the Grizzly Hills for their honeymoon. And it was, I think, I think it was the morning right after their first night there that they got a call over the comm that uh, Luca's older sister, Jekka, had been kidnapped. Oh, no. Cap, so what, what was the plan then, ma'am? The plan was to immediately go back. It, it was kind of a, uh, a torn decision because both of them really wanted the time together. But then again, Jekka is family and they that's more important. Right, certainly. Now, did you eventually end up rescuing Jekka? We did. She came back a little different than before. Uh, she was experimented on as well, so she was a little unrecognizable. Ah. Oh no. So, Luca, now did you guys eventually get to a honeymoon? Uh, not yet, actually. Wow. Wow. So, perhaps after the next big story arc, uh, planning and maybe something? Um, I'm hoping so. Uh, we did just finish the first arc of the current storyline, so where we're at isn't really the end. There's still more. Uh, so until everything is resolved, we'll probably ha still have to wait a while. Okay, now, taking it out of character, Cat. You plan for this story between your two characters, and then to have the guild story arc kind of come in and, and move that. Did that Was that something that you'd already known about, or was it a surprise to you guys? Well, Jekka is in charge of this storyline, and I actually um, discussed it with her about Kat being taken, because I really, really wanted to mess with Luca, and, and that's exactly what I did. And I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm glad I got the chance to do it. Now, Luca, were you aware of this uh, ultimate uh, <laughs> messing with you? Well, I have to say I brought it on myself because after Jekka was taken, I specifically said, well, now that her sister's gone, wouldn't it just be wonderful if Kat was taken too? And then they plotted against me. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> It was literally plotted. We agreed not to say a word to her until it happened. Wow. All right, folks. So when we come back, we're going to go a little bit more OC and find out a little bit about these two as a couple in real life. And so we will get to that as soon as we get back. All righty, folks, and we are back. And so, Kat, we're talking real life now. And you guys had, as you mentioned previously, talked about oh, this is great our characters are getting along awesomely and you guys were friends for quite a while um when in real life did that change when did you guys take that next step i believe it was actually back in november i think that's when we started dating and that was actually before kat and luca got together ah okay and luca what changed for you uh from that friendship to saying hey this is someone that i could really get into um we just we just talked a lot out of character all the time you know it didn't take long for us to go from talking in the game to talking on the phone uh, well text messaging first but it, it just seemed like we had so much in common she was easy to talk to and we just always had something to say to each other oh great now you guys live far apart from each other but you've had the opportunity to get together have you not yep i spent a whole week out there that's right. In fact, they were both together when we were interviewing them the first time. <laughs> and they were so gracious to take some of their precious time that they had together to spend with us during that first episode. So that is awesome. Did you guys have a blast? Yeah, it was it was a ton of fun. We got to do a whole bunch of stuff and just spent all that time making even more out of what we already had. And she used me as a human shield against a bee. I just want to point that out. Wow. Wow. Okay, you heard it here for first, folks. Holy smokes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm a good girlfriend for being protective and saving her life from this tiny little bug, but it's it's totally cool. Right. Well, that that is very nice of you, man, to to uh, protect her from from the vicious bee attack of 2015. That's that is awesome. Now, when we come back, we're gonna get some advice from these two awesome ladies about 
how to find that great in-game relationship for those people out there that might be looking. So we'll be right back with some great advice from these two on that. Alrighty, folks, we are back. And so, Kat, for that new role player that has loved everything that they've heard about your fun relationship with Luca here, and they want to experience that same kind of role play, how should they go about it? Well, I guess first they would just kind of have to see what's out there, um, just kind of interact their characters with someone, and I guess it's really no, no different than real life if you find a character that your character actually you know might like maybe kind of pursue it a little bit but try not to rush into anything too fast just kind of take your time with it and see how the characters work together if they really fit well together and if it just feels right to both players right so look at how important do you think communication is in regards to in-game relationships i think it's really important personally Getting to know each other out of character might help you develop some kind of relationship in character. You want to know who you're, who you're role-playing with, and especially when certain kinds of situations arise, you might want to know uh, where to draw a line. Even, I mean, and I don't just mean things like ERP, I mean even things like uh, battle or, you know, drama. Certain, certain things can be a little rougher for some people than others. Well, that's exactly true, isn't it? Triggers can come in all forms, and so that communication really helps to avoid those pitfalls that a lot of relationships run into. So, Kat, you certainly don't want to just run up to someone and say, hey, let's have a relationship, do you? Uh, no, and I've actually run into people where they've just they've moved too fast with my character, and I actually don't talk to them at all anymore. It just it, it didn't work out, so... I'm not really shedding any tears over it. Right. And Luca, it is much like real life, isn't it? You're in character relations with other people. And again, not necessarily when it comes to adult or ERP role play, but, you know, just in meeting folks and communicating and talking with folks, you know, in character almost mimics out of character, doesn't it? It does. And, and I think that sometimes the character can be kind of related to the player themselves. So there might be certain things that the, the character won't like because the player won't like. And if you push those things, sometimes you can push that player away along with that character. Well, that's very true. And I, I, I think that is excellent, excellent advice. Now, Kat, what are some mistakes some folks make when trying to get involved in in-game relationships? It's kind of like I said before, um, moving too fast and pushing a relationship, um, really forcing a relationship onto a character when it's just not something that matches with them. And Luca, what do you, what do you have to say? Yeah, I pretty much just feel the same way. If if you're forcing it, neither of you are going to have as much fun as you could have. Things aren't going to be as deep between the characters as they could be. There are a lot of options out there, and people should take their time to explore them and find what they think is going to be the best they can get. Right, and I think that is perfect, perfect from both of you. And I, I think it's important for people to hear. You know, you have a lot of people that that's all they want. You know, they're looking for that in-character relationship to turn into an out-of-character relationship, and that's not always necessary the case. Necessarily the case. In fact, it's very rare, isn't it? Yeah, I I know of a, a few other couples that have gotten together through the game. But there are also a lot of couples in the game who are just friends out of character, some who even don't get along out of character, which is kind of strange to me. I don't get it. But <laughs> if you can make it work, you make it work. That's right. So excellent, excellent advice from both of you. So folks, when we come back, we're going to talk about the future for Luca and Kat and where they see this awesome relationship going. So we'll be right back with that. Alrighty, folks, and we are back. And so, Luca, where do you foresee you two in the future? What's what's next for Luca and Kat? Well, there's a few things Luca's trying to do. She's trying to find a nicer ring, for one thing, because, you know, she's a simple farm girl. She got Kat a simple ring, but she thinks she deserves the best, and she wants to be able to give it to her. They're also looking for somewhere to stay on their own instead of staying at the farm with the family. Oh, okay. And Kat, what about you? What, what, what 
does the future hold for you two? Well, first things first, Kat has to get Luca new legs since she broke her last one. They can't wear without it. Do you guys foresee adopting uh, any of the orphans from maybe an orphanage or getting kids? That hasn't really been talked about at all, but I think Luca has some ideas. Ah, okay, Luca? Well, the running joke is that Luca keeps telling their mother, because their mother keeps telling her that she wants more grandchildren. She, Her, her sister, Anna, already has, I think, four kids. Uh, she says she's, she's claiming the next one. The next kid Anna has, she's just going to keep it. Okay. <laughs> Well, awesome. Awesome. And, and again, I, I hope that the future does hold a new ring for Kat, new legs for <laughs> Luca, and a new, new child uh, for the both of you. So when we come back, folks, we are going to actually talk about same-sex relationships and how Blizzard is handling those situations in the game. And we'll get their uh, comments on that as well. So we'll be right back with that. Alrighty, and we are back, folks. And so we are talking about same-sex relationships in the World of Warcraft universe and in the Out of Character as well, as far as how Blizzard handles it. And so in your opinion, Luca, how do you see Blizzard's inclusion of the LGBT community? It's not, it's, it's definitely not thrown in your face, but there are hints of it all around the game i normally stop when i notice something and take a screen cap and have a little moment like oh that's that's adorable right and cat what what do you have to say now yeah i think it's really welcoming in world of warcraft i, I rarely see any hate between players it's i don't know, it's just been a good place to kind of rp it out and everything well i have to agree and i i certainly know that blizzard has a long way to go but they certainly are on the right path and and have included some characters that you know may not outrightly come out and say they are homosexual but i think like lucas said there are certainly hints there and there as far as the player base is concerned i think cat you're right you hit it right on the head that I, for the most part i have hardly seen any uh discriminatory action against same-sex couples in the game and so that's always really good to see and i i think blizzard and the community has always been very welcoming to people of all different backgrounds and all different orientations and i think that's exactly where we want to go isn't it absolutely all righty folks and when we come back we are going to give our final thoughts to this awesome awesome couple in the game luca and cat so we'll be right back with our final thoughts on this awesome couple Alrighty, folks, and we are back. And so, Kat and Luca, you guys are just a terrific couple. I love your storyline. It is just, it always puts a smile on my face. And I think you guys do a great job, not only with your role play, but your out of character communication is awesome. And I think you've had some great advice for how to do an in game relationship and do it well. So, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, speak with us tonight. Well, thank you for coming to talk with us. And I'm glad we got a chance to uh, go back through and, and finish this up after the unfortunate oh, ending yes. of last time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, poor Turnwinkle, he was devastated, as was I. Yeah, no, it, it's, it was good to be able to come back and um, be able to talk to you again about them, and hopefully the rest of their future goes well in Kat's recovery and, and Luca's recovery. You bet. So, folks, again, if you want to do an in-game relationship, take a listen to some of their awesome advice, look at how they've run their in-game relationship, and you too will find that you will have an awesome time role-playing in the game in an in-game relationship. And so with that, Turwinkle's going to hurt back to Fuselite by the Sea with his final thoughts on this awesome, awesome in-game relationship of Luca and Kat. Alrighty, folks. Well, we made it safe and sound. Back to Fuselite by the Sea. An awesome interview, wasn't it, Turwinkle? Indubitably. So let's give them a nice big thank you. Thank you. Well, folks, if you like this episode, click that like button. If you would like to comment on this episode or on any of our previous episodes, please do so below. Let us know what you liked and what you didn't. And finally, if you would like to subscribe, well, we would love to have you. So just hit that subscription button today. Well, excellent job as always, Turwinkle. And Turwinkle, we will see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye, Turwinkle. Bye-bye. <laughs>